Belgrade has so much to love, from its hilltop parks to its wide array of dining options, pedestrian safe zones, friendly people, top-notch medical facilities, and beautiful riverside sunsets. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. For us, we needed to get out of the Schengen zone, and Serbia ended up being a great country to explore. There are plenty of parks and squares where you can take relaxing walks or find a bench to just sit and relax and enjoy a beautiful sunset. Because Serbia is a landlocked country, it's a cheap flight from a lot of places in the EU. We were lucky to have a great Airbnb host who was extremely generous and allowed us to check in around 8 a.m., which was great because we were exhausted. And our Airbnb was very comfortable and modern. We'll leave a link for it in the description below. What time is it? 5.15. Too early. <laughs> we're in top grade, so. Yes. The, uh, the one hour flight was pretty quick. Right, we had to get up at two o'clock to catch a five o'clock plane, which meant we did not get very much sleep. So, <laughs> but fortunately we we're in Serbia for a month. And although there was some confusion on the plane and they had gotten a bigger plane and the seat numbers didn't match, it meant that I didn't have anybody sitting next to me. And that's yeah, always a really good thing. <laughs> so, look at that. We get through the airport and yep. check out our Airbnb. See you soon. We stopped at an airport ATM straight away because we knew we would need cash for the A1 shuttle. Don't forget, when you use an ATM, you should always skip the conversion offer and pick the local currency option. Let your bank do the conversion. Currency is the Serbian dinar, and one US dollar is the equivalent of 110 dinars. Belgrade's public transportation system really requires you to be crystal clear on the schedule it runs. We and several others waited for the A1 airport shuttle bus, but it didn't actually stop at the airport until 7.20 a.m. I think we arrived before 6 a.m., so we were waiting for a long time. And the problem was that there's not really any posted information about it. The website wasn't easy to get to. It's not like there's a Serbian or Belgrade a website that really clearly states what's going on. We all were on our phones trying to figure this out. It was a little confusing. So just check beforehand, maybe get all your information straight and we'll give you an app too that helps you with transportation in Belgrade, which worked out really well for us. We'll put it in the description below. We did an episode recently that reminded you to triple check your ground transportation before you arrive. And one of the reasons that we put that on our list is because we violated our own rule. So. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. Yeah, we did end up taking a taxi, which we got a voucher for that kept the price to a limited amount. Taxis are known to overcharge at the airport, and therefore you have to go inside the airport and get a voucher, and that restricts how much money the taxi can charge you. For us, it was 25 US dollars, which was a bit pricey compared to the $4 I think it would have cost us had we used the shuttle service. We knew when the shuttle service was running, yes. There's also a city bus, but you need to buy tickets, which aren't as easy to buy as you would think. So we stopped at my kiosk for our bus passes because our other ones expired. And these places are everywhere around the city, so they're easy to find. What's difficult is that only some of them sell bus passes. Right. So this one luckily is by the one of the university uh, centers and also by one of the main fountains in our area. Officers did get on the bus to do a spot check, so don't think that you can get away with not having a ticket. We were sitting eating breakfast one day and one of the conveniences we saw was this little shuttle that kept going by us over and over again. We found out these are constant loops of shuttles that take people from the lower areas and downhill to the upper areas, which are the shopping areas and restaurants. And they're terribly convenient and they're also free. The city is built on many levels, so you'll be climbing up and down a lot of stairs. And since it's also fairly spread out, you'll really want to wear good walking shoes. There are a lot of steps, so if you are mobility challenged, it can be a bit tricky. In addition to the buses and those little shuttles, the city also has trams. They're an older design and they look like they came from the 60s, 
but they will work well and we rode them on our way across the city, including to see the Nikola Tesla Museum. Which was one of the top things that Kevin enjoyed. Belgrade is a really great place for slow travelers. We never felt rushed. It was a very easy city to live in for a month. While we didn't visit Serbia specifically to get medical assistance, Belgrade is a great place for people to go for medical tourism. I need to get a hernia repaired and I knew that I needed to have some downtime where I would have some days or weeks to recover. I didn't know how much time it would take. And it couldn't have gone more smoothly in our choice of hospitals here in Belgrade. In addition to Kevin getting really great care with people who all spoke English, it was at a reasonable price that was much less expensive than we would have paid in the US. We'll put a link to that episode below where it shows the whole experience and documents everything. It's highly recommended. Unfortunately, due to Kevin's condition, we really weren't able to get around and explore quite as much as we would in some other places, but this is definitely some place we'll come back and spend a little more time. And Belgrade felt really safe. Even though Kevin wasn't able to climb a lot of hills and he had recuperation time where he wasn't getting out of the Airbnb very much, I, on the other hand, was taking some long walks and just really trying to explore a little bit on my own. And being a single woman traveling outside alone and even on the bus system, I felt completely safe. And one of our biggest takeaways from this time in Belgrade was the people. They were kind, they were attentive, they would help us out whenever we needed something. So it's, it's a wonderful place. We didn't know much about Belgrade before arriving. So before Kevin's surgery, we took a walking tour with a guide to get to know it better from an insider's perspective. Serbia has had a troubled past and there's still a lot of sensitivities. We learned a lot from our guide about the different viewpoints over the years. We believe it's always a great idea to spend time with a local learning about the history of a place so that you get to know more about its culture and people. Nabush was very kind and patient with all our many questions. Our guide pointed out one area where if you go past the university that we have displayed here, it's famous for nightclubs and dancing and lots of tambourites and music. And our guide reassured us that even at our age, we're still cool enough to be part of the Belgrade nightlife scene. <laughs> sure. We disagreed with them. There are also boats floating on the waterway that continue the party zone. Additionally, there's a long promenade along the waterfront that's full of restaurants and shopping and nightlife. Parts of it are under construction and will probably be that way for many years. It's been called the Balkan Dubai and is a bit controversial. There's more to it. I think it was supposed to have been built much faster than what it looks like the pace is for it. But for us, it was convenient because it was great for walking. Belgrade has some beautiful buildings like its new parliament building and many places throughout Stari Grad, which is the center of the city. When you're in the main shopping areas, many of the buildings are beautiful. The streets are wide in this part of town, and most restaurants have generous outdoor seating areas. Also, there's a lot of green space. It was refreshing to see playgrounds and child play areas, and they're all very centrally located. No 
nobody seemed like they were in a hurry. And I'm probably butchering this, but we especially loved Calamagdon Park. If you go early in the day, it has a festival-like feel with food stalls. You can see across the river to New Belgrade, which unfortunately we didn't get to explore except for, like I said, the hospital visits. But this park has benches all along the water's edge, and it's the perfect place to watch a sunset. But if you want to see it, you need to come early, because everybody has this same idea. Wander a bit throughout the park and visit Belgrade Fortress. It's free to visit and was a military fortification built over 2,000 years ago. We weren't able to wander through it, but its walls have seen conquests and defeats over the centuries. We're planning to come back to Belgrade just to see this. We think it's that worthwhile. The Nikola Tesla Museum was one of the primary places Kevin wanted to visit while we were in Belgrade. And although it's small, it was fascinating. Make sure you bring cash though, because it does not accept credit cards. It's an unusual museum in that it primarily gives guided tours at the top of every hour lasting 45 minutes. Check the website because sometimes they're only done in Serbian and there's only one tour at a time. You have to wait around outside for a while for the previous tour to end. So be like us and remember your umbrella if the weather looks at all like it will be fussy. At the conclusion of the tour, you're able to roam freely through the museum until the next tour begins. You don't have to leave, but the first part of the tour is a video room with some of the displays that the guide will operate. So when you first arrive, you'll want to be close to the front of the room if possible. After the demonstrations, you can wander up to the display tables, even before or after, but you can't operate any of the devices yourself. Our guide was happy to rerun a demonstration for anyone that wanted to see it up close. Interestingly, Belgrade has a pretty robust mall culture. Although we don't really frequent malls, there was one in Stari Grad called Raj Chiva. And another one is called the Galleria, where Judy got her hair colored. And there are several across the water in New Belgrade as well. We were in Serbia long enough that I needed to have my hair colored twice. <laughs> and there was a gray salon and a link below all of the details because she did a really fabulous job. In fact, speaking of how special the people are, there were some people who arrived after me and my services ended up being a lot more complicated than they were originally supposed to be. And it was pretty cool because they stayed just to get to know me better and to watch how my hair color was going to transform. I have never been at a salon where people just wanted to hang out because they loved the hairdresser so much and just wanted to chat. Because we travel light, we don't do much shopping, but we had to window shop at the Gekakan bookstore, the oldest bookstore in Serbia built in 1901. It's beautiful. Plus, look at these gorgeous Van Gogh tea sets. Of course, I can't buy anything. There's, we have no room to carry anything, but, and it, it has nothing to do with Belgrade at all, but what a fun surprise for a Van Gogh lover like me. You won't want to miss hearing about a restaurant called Question Mark. Well, it's not even called question mark. It's literally just the symbol question mark. But before we get to that, we're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. We're also giving you a chance to peek behind the scenes and are offering a bunch of other perks we're calling gelato levels. If you decide you wanna help support us financially as well. A video with the details is linked in the description below. Our waiter at Question Mark was quite a character. He was very lively, very proud of Serbia, Serbian wine, very natural, everything natural here. <laughs> you will love it, you know? Just, just a wonderful guy to hang around with. <laughs> He was very proud of everything Serbian and his happy demeanor was contagious and just added to the dining experience. Our first dinner was at Svaski Venak, which felt pretty local. It wasn't as historic as question mark, but it did expose us to Serbian food. Spoiler alert, this country really enjoys its meat. Our favorite breakfast spot was Donata and our server Yanko was just wonderful. Our, the cappuccinos were great. Breakfast was great. I really enjoyed that place. I had a Balkan version of shakshuka, which was really tasty. Our last meal of the trip was at Jalavnik, which is the harbor area of town. Fair warning that there are a lot of stairs to get up to it, but the food was worth it. The environment was very traditional, and you could definitely feel and taste the history here. 
There were several things I wanted to try, so please don't come at me for wasting food. So I don't actually know what I ordered, except <laughs> I know that these were supposed to be typical Serbian foods, and I wanted to try them. You pointed to a lot of things on the menu and said, bring me these. <laughs> Right, so um, I'll need to do some more research, we'll fill in the blanks, but these are a form of um, cracklings. So if you like, it's pork belly that's deep fried, and then this is a typical um, relish, and it's... Is it for pork rinds? No, <laughs> it's just something that I want to try because it's Serbian. <laughs> so I think that you would normally dip this, um, use it on um, like prosciutto if you were having a charcuterie plate, uh. but we aren't having a charcuterie plate, so. <laughs> but um, it's called um, Ajvar Relish. And then this is a, a kind of cheese that's Serbian and it, it often is used inside, like you could get something that's kind of like chicken Kiev, that is chicken and ham and then this kind of cheese. And I don't know, I just wanted to try them. So I guess I'll get started. Yeah. <laughs> Crackling up. Deep fried, they're still um, very juicy and flavorful. They're not crunchy the way a Typical. It's like the fat is fried, but it's cut thick enough that it's not crunchy. Yeah, um, quite good. But let's go ahead and dip it in in this anyway. Uh, we'll see. It's good. Um, it's very mild. Um, I think it's uh, roasted peppers and paprika and seasonings, but it's not spicy. It's just fresh tasting and um, I could maybe even use a little bit of heat. Maybe I'm getting a back flavor of some seasonings, but again, not spicy at all. But I could see it be, would be a good relish. Yeah, it's tasty. Let's go ahead and try the cheese. Everything goes on the pork rinds. It's just a very mild cheese. Um, maybe similar a bit to ricotta. Yeah, it's it's a mild cheese, so it's not strong flavor. There's no seasonings on it. Okay. Um, I wonder if it's you have good. Virginia, ah, uh, on the margin. Ah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> some bread to make sure we can dip. Well, or spread. Yeah. We're a little embarrassed to even show you this restaurant because it's Sri Lankan street food, but Curry Souls had some of the tastiest food we've had and we wanted to share it with you. You have to try their signature dish called beef katu. You can request the spice level, but we recommend you get Serbian level hot. It's hot, but not too hot. You had this the other night and I was jealous because it looked better than mine. It's katu. It's bread and uh, you can pick different kinds of meats and spices in here and It's vegetables. 16 vegetables. 16, okay, lots of vegetables. So healthy now. <laughs> and we boosted up our spice from Serbian to Sri Lanka. And it definitely is spicier. And the nice part is the meals are big enough where we got two meals out of each one. So kind of a value. <laughs> Let's break down our travel costs. Our Airbnb cost $1,162.81 for 30 days, which breaks down to be only $38.76 per night. Our small group walking tour was $64.40. The Nikola Tesla Museum required cash only and cost 800 dinar per person. You may have noticed that since mid-May, I've swapped out nearly all the clothes we've been wearing in favor of wool. While we were here, I had four dresses and three shirts altered, all for the low price of 30 US dollars, which was a steal to me. As for dining costs, at question mark, both our meals were 850 dinar. The salad was 310 dinar, our bread was 190 dinar, and a glass of Serbian wine was 600 dinar. With a bottle of water, our total was less than $28. Amazing. At Svasvi Venak, apple cider was 420 dinar. My spoked pork ribs were 1550 dinar and my stuffed cabbage was 1050 dinar. At Jalovnik, Avjar was 450 dinar, pork rinds were 390 dinar, Kashmok was 600, my minced veal was 1,190, and Kevin's chicken dish was 1590. Serbian wine was 290 dinar, and my cappuccino was 200 dinar. It of course was more than we could eat, but it was fun to try all these Serbian dishes. 
and the total cost was 4,710 dinar, $42.60 US. Maybe expensive for a big Serbian meal, but for the, all of the tasting we got to do, it was worth it. And the beef katu at Curry Souls was 12.50 dinar for each of us, which covered two meals for each of us. So it's a pretty good deal. So final thoughts, what did you think about our time in Belgrade, Serbia? Well, my time in Belgrade, Serbia had some qualifiers to it, <laughs> but I'd have to say that even though I had surgery there, and even though I couldn't get around town as much or as often as I liked, I thought the place was wonderful. I thought the people were friendly. I thought the areas were very European. I felt like you could just stroll and relax. There was a lot of places just to exist in this city, which isn't always the case. You know, there's not always a park around. There's not always a river. There's not always places to go sit and see a sunset. And this city had all that and we didn't get to explore it enough. So I really want to go back. So what are your thoughts? I thought it was a very easy, comfortable place to visit, especially for slow travelers. If you want to just relax and unwind. And remember that it's not Schengen. So it made it a little bit easier for us to deal with the time frame. We could stay there a little bit longer and not be panicked that we're running out of days. Right, I think that there's a lot to see. We barely touched the surface of Belgrade, let alone Serbia. My fault. <laughs> so we definitely want to go back. And, but, but at the same time, I feel like sometimes it's just nice to take it slow. And this is a place that really allows you to do that. I agree. We hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. We are always interested in growing our community and sharing it with your friends and family it would also help us a lot. And check out FindingGMary.com. Lots of great articles there. And we also have our La Familia Forum, which is a wonderful place to chat about this. Until next time. Until next time.